Okay, so hey guys, and here we are for, I believe, part 48 of the F1 Manager, Minardi Manager career mode. And here we are, nearly at the end of the 2001 season. And we've got the Italian Grand Prix, is the next Grand Prix we've got um, on the calendar. And so, I've completely messed up this intro, but basically, long and short of it, it's the Italian Grand Prix soon. And we've just got to see what news there is between now and then. Okay, so we've got some stuff here. We've got Port Royal, Sacco's team merchandise of Holdall's, um, Holdall bags, I believe they are. So we're just going to renew that. We've had that contract before, um, so we're just renewing it. We, and then we got to reapply our less well-paying sponsors. So there's Champion back on the car. And then we've got to apply AGIP, I guess. I don't say you say... I, I presume you don't say Egyp. Then again, they are, I mean, I guess it's just AGIP. But regardless, AGIP is on the car as usual. It's back there. And then we got Fraser, which is the only company which has sponsored us right from the start. Fraser, uh, yeah, Fraser Italian Office Furniture goes right there in the car. You hardly notice it. There on the driver's ovals. There on the driver's ovals. And there, right on the side of the front wing. Actually, you can see that. That's no sport on the side of the front wing. Yeah, so that's everything for the sponsors. Right, okay, so we got some emails from Neil Oatley concerning he's designed the sixth model of front wings and the sixth model of rear wings. So, right, Neil Oatley working as hard as ever. We've got to tell him to start manufacturing them. So also, one thing I want to have a quick look at is the issue or, well, the situation with the suspensions, as we saw last time out. God, I made a horrific mistake with the suspensions. Plus, also, Ross Braun was not manufacturing enough of them. So, let's have a look. The suspensions, the newest one... There's, there's only one. There's now still only... We need four, really, for a race weekend. He's only one. He's only made one, and there's part way... Well, a quarter of the way on to making the second one. I don't know what Ross Braun's doing. I don't know how... He can't manufacture these parts, considering Mike Gascoigne and Gustav Brunner were able to do it easily. But, there you go. My opinion of Ross Braun is going down rapidly as this season has carried on. Um, but yeah, we just got to see what other news there is. Right, new components deal for Jordan. Could this be MR Brakes? Because it's rumoured there. So, what have Jordan confirmed? Honda PGM Electronics. Okay, and that's no real surprise there, because uh, Jordan did have... Well, I mean, Jordan used to have Mugen Honda engines, so I guess the Honda electronics just came as part of it. It makes sense. And again, it's not the best electronics, but hey-ho, Jordan, we see... Well, I mean, Jordan have got Ford Z-Tech engines. We know that their quality control isn't really that high with getting supplied parts, so that's why they've got Honda PGMs, I guess. Right, another new component still for Jordan. What could this could this be MR brakes? No, it's Brembo brakes. The rumours were wrong. Wow, that I mean that does happen sometimes in this game, but it's not I'd probably say it only happens, I'd say, maybe twenty five percent of the time that the rumours are wrong. But they were wrong this time, so they have Brembo brakes on the Jordan. So so Jordan have they announced their engine partnership for next year? Oh god, I can't remember if they have. If they have, though, it's not been anyone good. Maybe it's been Ford Z-Tech uh, Ford Z-Tech again, I don't know. But they've got rubbish electronics, rubbish brakes, and quite frankly, the future isn't exactly looking bright for Jordan at the moment. Right, so we got some more news. Neil Oatley has designed barge boards, because typically the barge boards are designed around the same time as the front and rear wings. It just always has been the way this series... So we've got to tell him to stop making the 5th model and start making the 6th model. The worry is I don't think he's going to make 4 of these in time for the Grand Prix. What about the front and rear wings? How many of the, those has he made? Ah, 3! And he's going to make finish making a 4th one by the 13th of September. And the race doesn't start to the 14th. Yes, so we will be able to use the new front and rear wings for this race. But not the barge boards. So that's uh, slightly annoying, but hey, 
it does mean they'll be debuting in uh, the Nürburgring Grand Prix in Europe, so we've got that to look forward to. Right, so that was all the news, really. Wow, not a lot there, really. It was just concerning us and Jordan, primarily, actually. Um, and yeah, and so that's everything. So, four more races left to go. Mick Ackerman has just about not sealed the Drivers' Championship. He should have done last time in Belgium. If I had half a brain, he would have secured it in Belgium. But, he could secure it in Italy. And I don't know quite how the Tifosi will feel about it, because Hakkinen, Schumacher's old rival and former McLaren driver, I don't quite know how they'll feel about Hakkinen winning on their doorstep. But, he is driving for Minardi, the Italian team. They should like that, they should be relatively happy about that. Unless, Hakkinen doesn't score any points this race, in which case Coulthard is pulling off an amazing charge, and Coulthard will actually catch up to Hakkinen, well I mean, ha I mean if Coulthard wins the remaining races and Hakkinen doesn't score any points, Coulthard's won the championship. And if, well, if that happens, that would be the comeback of all comebacks. Um, I mean, I guess Coulthard's been slightly unluckier with re car reliability this season so far compared to Hakkinen, so maybe it's Hakkinen's turn. But regardless, it's the team's home race, it's Stefano Domenicali's home race, it's... Luca Badoa's home race, of course he's not taken any part in this race, but still he's at the team. And um, I think that's it actually, we haven't really got many Italian connections. No, but we are bringing... Gustav Bruno isn't Italian, is he? Don't think he is. Whatever, regardless, it's the team's home race, it's a fantastic track, legendary as it says in the game, rightly so, the legendary Monza circuit. And hopefully it can pr produce a fantastic race. And actually we damn nearly got a 1-2 here at Monza last year. In 2000, Mika Salo was leading it and he did actually end up winning the race. Damon Hill was in second. But on lap 50 of 53, he had a car failure. And that was gutting. We could have got a Minardi 1-2 in 2000, which would have been exceptional. Didn't quite happen though, but we still got a race win. And also, when I was watching back the 2000 Italian Grand Prix in this series, something I completely forgot about, it, I didn't even include it in the Season 2 montage, so I feel like I should give it a mention now, but Johnny Herbert in the McLaren, and Jarno Trulli, I believe was he in the Stewarts, I think? But either way, Johnny Herbert and Jarno Trulli were 13 laps down at, at one point during the race, and they were in half-decent cars. I mean, the McLaren, Johnny Herbert and the McLaren, 13 laps down. And I just felt like I should mention that because it wasn't included in the Season 2 montage, stupidly. But anyway, the 2001 Italian Grand Prix, that's what we're focusing on, so let's head on into it. Right, so hang on, just before practice really gets underway, I've got a bit of a dilemma here, I believe. Well, barge boards, okay, let me just talk, talk you through a situation. Barge boards, we're going to have to use the fifth model of that. Suspension, there's only three... There's only three fourth model suspensions, so given an entire fortnight, Ross Braun hasn't been able to manufacture enough suspensions for this Grand Prix. That's just unacceptable. So that means we're going to have to use the third model of suspension for both of our cars. And then um, the rest of it's fine. Front and rear wing. Hang on, please don't tell me I... Oh my god, are you kidding me? Don't tell me I've made an... So I only... Oh my god. I really have been slipping these past couple of days when I've recorded this episode and the last one. Apparently, I only told 
Ross Braun to manufacture the new front wing and not the new rear wing. Jeez, what is... Oh, I'm slipping. I don't. I mean, we don't need the new rear wing. We're way too quick as it is, but still. Um, you know what, we'll just... We'll put on the sick model of front wing. Um, hang on, what am I doing? I really am slipping. I'm not paying attention. But crucially, we've got the engine situation. I'll sort out the rest off screen. We've got the engine situation. Now, here's the problem. We're on the third model engines... And the fourth model ones are more powerful, but we've only got three of them. We've got two third, third models. I'm in a bit of an odd situation, so I don't quite know what I'm going to do with the engine situation at the moment, but I'll probably tell you at the end of the practice report. Right, okay, so an update on the engine situation and, in fact, the end of practice. I don't really need to worry about what engines we're using, quite frankly, because... Hakkinen is faster than Coulthard, and Coulthard is way faster than absolutely everyone else. So, quite frankly, the fact I forgot to tell Ross Braun to manufacture the rear wings... Well, actually, that's a stupid logic in itself. Why should I have to tell Ross Braun to manufacture the new rear wings? Like, if he had any logic, he would manufacture the new ones. But, I mean, that's just a perfect example of video game logic not really translating into the real world, but... I don't have to worry about the rear wing escapade and the engine escapades because quite frankly we're so much more dominant than everyone else, it does not matter. Heinzel Frentzen's third though, um, so he's quicker than Michael Schumacher now. Frentzen still hasn't finished the race this season and I tell you what, the team's home race, that would be special. If he got a podium at the team's home race... It would almost make up for all of the crap that's happened to him. Excuse my language, but all of the rubbish that's happened to him earlier on this season. It really would. If Frentzen could get a podium, that'd be great. But I, I just feel that that pace he's got over Michael Schumacher at the moment isn't going to last when we get into the race, or maybe even into qualifying. Um, and also, going down to Arrows, just because they're probably the most interesting team, really... At least he's in 18th, so he's quicker than Barrichello and both Pross, which is astonishing. I've no idea how he's quicker than both of those, um, considering they've got more powerful engines. And, of course, we've got Genet, who's run out of engines. And, in fact, I believe Genet ran out of engines at Monza last year, I think. I think it was Monza last year he ran out of engines. Or maybe it was the Arrows team as a whole ran out of engines last year. Something along those lines, but anyway, let's just head on to the qualifying report. Okay, so qualifying for the 2001 Italian Grand Prix has ended, and wow, if you're a part of the Tifosi, or if you just generally support Italian teams, you're going to have a field day tomorrow, as the two Italian teams, predictably, but still completely dominated qualifying. Mika Hakkinen had topped the session in the Minardi, which may leave a bitter taste for the Tifosi, as he is Schumacher's former rival, but now at the plucky Italian team, we may well see him embraced as he crosses the finish line, inevitably to win the race as long as his car holds up, and if he does win, then he'll become the 2001 Drivers' Champion. His teammate David Coulthard is in second, so Coulthard has done very well to be so far ahead of both Ferraris, but he's still four tenths a lap off of Hakkinen. Michael Schumacher is in third, and set a lap time 2.8 seconds a lap slower than David Coulthard. So it's clear to see which of the two Italian teams has the advantage at Monza. And then we've got Heinz Howard Frentzen who is still waiting to finish a race in the red of Ferrari, is in fourth. Following both Ferraris are both Williams of Stephen Watson and Ralph Schumacher, with Stephen Watson surprisingly being quicker than Ralph Schumacher, and by almost a full second a lap. Giancarlo Fisichello is in seventh in the BAR with Lamarie ninth, as both BAR boys are separated by Jarno Trulli in eighth. 
The other Jordan of Pedro De La Rosa is in 10th with Mika Salo 11th. Jacques Villeneuve is in 12th and Alexander Wurtz has a reasonably decent qualifying seat up in 13th. Eddie Irvine is in 14th and the other Sauber of Pedro Deniz is in 15th. Damon Hill and the Stewart has had a shocking qualifying session as he's down in 16th. A far cry from the man who nearly got second place here last year until a car failure ruined his race right at the end. Rubens Barrichello in the Benetton is 17th with Olivier Panis 18th. Benetton's poor season is summed up as Sarazan is way down in 19th, Benetton struggling massively in the second half of the season especially, although he is still quicker than Zanardi in 20th. Now the interesting result is Jean Lacy down in 21st. Now you may notice he's 14 seconds a lap off the pace of everyone else, and that's because he only did an outlap. And common opinion around the paddock is that Arrows predictably have run out of engines as Genet ran out of engines last time out and so it looks like it's the turn of a Lacey to run out of engines in his Arrows car and until the race it's all speculation but at the moment it looks like a Lacey season in Formula 1 is over. Right so here we are on the race strategy screen as you can see a one stop strategy for today's race. And now, right, last time out, I completely messed up this screen, so, right, what I want to do is have the same parts as we had before, the same model parts anyway, so refit same parts. That's what I wanted to do last time out, and we cost, well, we lost an engine from it, and, uh, well, a fourth model engine, but as you saw, despite the fact we're using a third model engine in qualifying miles ahead of everyone else, Quite frankly, the fact that we're not using a, re a newer model rear wing and the best model engine, quite frankly, that does not matter. What does matter at this moment in time is that we've got all brand new parts, apart from chassis which are slightly worn, but I don't think that makes any difference at all. Um, but we've got brand new 0% worn parts, we've got the race strategy all calculated, um... Yeah, and, well, we're going to head on to the Italian Grand Prix, the team's home race. And this should be a very interesting Grand Prix. Hopefully we won't have a car failure like we did last time out. Um, well, not, well, yeah, last time out we did one. We had one inevitably, but I mean last year. God, oh, don't tell me it. Jesus, how many cars did Hakkinen give birth to? He gave birth to a Benetton, a Salvo, an Arrows, and a Prost. And last year, we had Zonta jump the queue in the Prost, and we've had Genet jump the queue a couple of times this year. Now we've got so many cars jumping the queue, it's actually completely screwed over Coulthard. I mean, it's inevitable Hacken's going to win the race anyway, so it won't make much deal to him, and Hacken's going to win the championship. There's an Arrows off in the background. That is, well, Genet. Yep, Genet was the Arrows who jumped the queue, but Genet did it along with a Benetton and a Sauber and a Prost. Those guys, whoever those guys are, very cheeky people. But Genet's off in exactly the same fashion he did this time last year. And Sean and Lacey, who didn't jump the queue, was at the back of the field. He should also retire, and if he does, there you go, a Lacey spinning out there, so Arrows have run out of engines, and their season is over. Okay, so Sarazan is leading the race, Hakkinen in second, Deniz in third, Coulthard fourth, Frenson is in 5th, look at this, look at Sarazan, the former Minardi driver, well I mean he did one race in real life, he hasn't done any races this, se uh, this series for Minardi, but look, Sarazan leading a race in the Benetton, but Hacklin got passed easily, um, I have no idea why Benetton have been so slow this season, especially in the second half, uh, Benetton have been painfully slow, I mean I know they got Petronas engines, but still, there's Coulthard getting past the Sauber of Pedro Deniz. Does he get past Sarazan? Sarazan is going painfully slow. And he still didn't even let Coulthard through. Oh my word. Which Prost is that as well? Is that, um, that's not Zanardi. So it is. Um, I can't think of who the other... Panis, there you go. I was about to say, I couldn't think of who the other Prost driver is. It's Olivier Panis. Thank God it came out of him because... I couldn't think for the life of me who the other 
Um, who the other Prost driver was. I mean, it makes sense it's Panis because French driver, French team. To the, and Prost. I mean, they've been horrific this series, uh, this season. I keep on getting mixed up between those two words, but this season they've been horrific because they've got the worst chassis on the grid, an Andrew Green chassis. And they've just been so downgraded. I believe they've also got Ford ZTEC engines, which is a mild downgrade from their Peugeot engines. So, Prost, that's why they've done so poorly this season. I mean, they've always done poorly. I believe they were, yeah, they were the last team to score points this series. Minardi and Arrows both scored points after four races. Prost didn't score points until 22 races into this series. So, Prost haven't been good a good team as a whole this series, but, jeez, look how slow Sarazan is, even down the straight. I mean, that's a Jordan with a Ford ZTEC engine. That's blitz pass there. I mean, wow. The, that's the thing that confuses me most, is why... I can understand why the Benetton's slow. No, I can understand why the Prost is slow and all this and that. I don't understand why the Benetton's so slow. Maybe they have a poor chassis, but I mean, I've completely forgotten if they do. Um, but it's entirely possible. Right, and hopefully, uh, Trulli's up into fourth. And bearing in mind, I was saying that in the 2000 Grand Prix, which is a fact I completely glossed over, Trulli was 13 laps down when Damon Hill retired, 13 laps behind the lead of Mika Salo. And Johnny Herbert was also 13 laps down as well, so I can't believe I skimmed over that fact. I literally watched that video earlier on today, and I was like, how did that not get into the season montage? That's such a, such a stunning point, really. But anyway, while I've been rambling on, Zanardi's out of an engine failure, so we may see Zanardi not start the race. Um, in the next race, Nürburgring, uh, Villeneuve's out of a driver error, so is Fizzy Keller, and so is Mika Salo. So Mika Salo, who won here last year, is out with a driver error. We Well, Mika Salo, we rarely saw driver errors from him last year, if ever. But, I don't know, maybe the Stuart's just more difficult to drive. It's entirely possible. But, well, it's, it'd be a bit weird. I guess it's possible, but that's not really much of an excuse. Surely if you can drive one Formula 1 car, you can drive all of them. Frentzen out again. A driver error. What is... Right, Frentzen, this is the one race he might actually have finished. And he's binned it. I mean, I think this might be the fourth driver error. Maybe fifth driver error he's had this, se uh, this season so far. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is his car should not be having that many car failures. And... Someone did actually comment a few episodes ago, listing how hack, uh, how Frentzen's retired this season, and Frentzen had more driver errors than I remember him doing. But the fact is, this Ferrari shouldn't build a car that's this unreliable. But when you've got an extremely unreliable car, you've got to take the chances you can, and Frentzen just hasn't. I mean, as I say, I think that's the fourth or maybe even fifth driver error he's had this year. Damon Hill, okay, Damon Hill was in fifth. He's been overtaken by next year's, well, our test driver for next year, Patrick Lamary. So, Patrick Lamary's doing very well at the moment. Um, so, there you go. That's good to see from someone who's going to be with us next year. We, you know, we don't want to sign Lamary and then suddenly find out he's doing terribly. Wow, jeez. Hackling out with a barge board failure. Oh my word. Je oh my god, this is this is a repeat of last year of, of my last save file I did with Minardi. It's an absolute repeat. Basically, I'll explain it now. The I, I might already have explained it, but in the last save file I had with Minardi, I had as my two drivers Villeneuve and Frentzen. Now Villeneuve was extremely quick during the first half of the season, and then in the second half, he kept on having car failures, driver errors, and then Frentzen won the championship by about three points. So there you go, everybody who feels sorry for Frentzen, I have won the driver's championship with him. But, um, it's, al it's almost a repeat. I can't believe this is happening. I mean, if Coulthard retires, then Hackner's won the championship. So the championship, well, the championship is by no means over for Hakkinen. He could still win it this race in not exactly the best of fashions, but hey, he could still win it this race. 
Um, we got Coulthard on his last lap. Where is he? There he is. Oh, I've completely... I've completely forgotten the corner names. Oh, Lesmo. There you go. Lesmo 1, Lesmo 2. So he's going around the two Lesmos, I believe. Yep, there you go. He's coming up to the second Lesmo. And Coulthard... Well, I mean, you, you saw me do it. You saw me fit brand new parts on both cars. I mean... <laughs> It's almost like I'm making the championship interesting, which of course I can't. I mean, I can't fit brand new parts and then have them fail. That's just the game. I mean, that's... Wow, I mean, this... Wow. Jesus, cool far damn it going into the back of that Prost. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know what's going on all of a sudden. We hack, I mean, I guess Coulthard has had more car failures up to this point. So I guess maybe it's just Hakkinen's turn to get unlucky. But it's played out nicely for Coulthard as he's going to win the Italian Grand Prix. And hopefully the Tifosi will love that, the former McLaren driver winning on home turf. Hopefully. We'll have to see. I mean, I d realistically, I mean, I don't know. if I don't know how happy the Tifosi would be because, well, he's a former McLaren driver, but hey, he wasn't hacking them. So I don't think they would mind too much. Oh, whoa, Michael Schumacher out of a barge board failure. So the 1999 and 2000 world champions have both crashed out at the same race within three laps of each other from the same car failure. And they were Olivier Panis, who's doing exactly what Johnny Herbert and Jano Trulli did last year by, you know, being miles off everyone else. Panis is going to score a point from it unless he retires. I mean, Paris was going extremely slowly. Who has retired there? Is that Virtu retired just then? I think that was Virtu retired just then. Actually, if another guy retires, Hackman's going into the points. We would need to... Well, no, I think Hackman would need to finish... 5th to win the Giles Championship. 4th for certain he'd win the Giles Championship. But still, Stephen Watson is in 2nd place... Damon Hill, there you go, third place. That's good to see. Damon Hill, he lost second place last year due to a car failure. I believe a suspension failure last year. But Damon Hill finally is going to be on the podium this series at Monza. That's great to see. I mean, I guess Damon Hill did it in real life at some point. He almost certainly did. But this series, he's on the podium. And actually, Damon Hill, we've seen the Stewart this season... Especially in the second half, as Stewart's another one of those teams which has fallen off. Pre-season testing, Stewart are very quick. Not so much later on into the season, but Damon Hill and the Stewart has been able to outpace Lamarie in the BAR. And we've seen how quick the BAR have... The BAR was the third quickest car at the start of this se uh, the, Yeah, the start of this season. But Damon Hill's been quicker than Lamarie. That is a massive achievement. Hill to be quicker than Lamarie when Hill's in the Stewart and Lamarie's in the BAR. What isn't a big achievement is Olivier Panis was able to score two points. But, I mean, it's stupid. He scored two points, but he was 13 laps off. I mean, does he get full points? I mean, in real F1, would he actually get full points? Would he get half points? It's 75% distance, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, I believe he has done 75% distance. Just. Actually, I think he literally has just done 75% distance. Yeah, just about. So there you go, he would just about be deserving of getting two points. But anyway, there you go, we'll continue on. And the saga of who's going to be the world champion, the driver's world champion this year, is carrying on. And I don't want it to happen like this. Wow, I mean, Minardi win at Italy. And I've said it before... I would rather have Coulthard win. I mean, of course, I, I mean I prefer Coulthard to Hakkinen, but that doesn't mean I don't want Hakkinen to win the Drivers' Championship. I like Coulthard. I'd rather he win it, but that doesn't mean I want Hakkinen to lose it, especially in such stupid circumstances. And I feel bad because the reason he didn't win it last race was because of me. That's why I feel bad, as he should have won it last race, and it's my fault that it that, that this is still going on. It's ridiculous. But anyway, there's Hakkinen. He's still leading in the Drivers' Championship, but he's just, just hasn't got enough of a margin to win it, um, or to guarantee 
that he's going to win it at the moment. Uh, Villeneuve all of a sudden, well not all of a sudden, but I mean Villeneuve in 4th place, best of the rest in the Drivers' Championship, I don't know how he's done that, I mean Villeneuve's had a few good races this season, I mean Stephen Watson's climbing up, Stephen Watson will second this race, I think he got 3rd to last time out didn't he at Belgium, so Stephen Watson's doing very well, I mean where's Ralph Schumacher, 6 points, Ralph Schumacher we kept on labelling labeling him last season as one of the three best of the rest drivers but Stephen Watson's massively outperforming and maybe we should have got Stephen Watson as our driver not Lamarie oh, it was difficult to say because as I said Lamarie's had more car failures and they're different cars the Williams has really come into its element in the second half of the season whereas the BAR in comparison has fallen off um, constructors nothing really particularly interesting there no, well, Benetton and Sauber are on equal points. Stewart, they, this is what I mean, the Stewart this year has not been quick. I mean, look, they've only got 10 points this season. And four of them would j literally just gotten. So, wow. I mean, that tells you how good of a result it was in Damon Hill. Manager Championship, Ron Dennis. Despite the fact he's been completely insane this series. I mean, let, let's count some of the things he's done. He's... He's got rid of Hakkinen, and he got rid of Hakkinen in 99. If he never got rid of Hakkinen, I never would have got him myself. He would have been too expensive. Um, he got rid of Coulthard to Benetton in 2000. He got full ZTEC engines. He's got rid of Neil Oatley, although we did kind of poach him off of McLaren. But still, Ron Dennis has done all these stupid things, yet the game reckons he's the second best manager. And I don't know what this game has against Frank Williams, but it just doesn't like him. It's... For ages rated Frank Williams as the worst uh, worst manager. But anyway, um, on to the... Well, we're not on to anything, because of course this is the end of the episode. But next time out, we're at the Nürburgring Grand Prix. Or the European Grand Prix at Nürburgring. And, oh, look, there it is, Frentzen. Frentzen holds the race lap record. Does that mean he can finally score some points? Let's hope so. But then again, Hakkinen. I believe it said Hakkinen was holding the race lap record at Italy. Yeah, Hakkinen was holding the race lap record, and that meant nothing in the race. So hopefully, Frentzen can score some points, and also hopefully, as much as I would prefer Coulthard to win the Jarvis Championship, I'd feel bad for Hakkinen if he lost it now. So hopefully, Hakkinen can win the Jarvis Championship. Hopefully, Frentzen can score some points. And, well, hopefully, everything can just go to plan. We can have a normal race with some normal results, and... Hopefully that can be the case. So I'll see you guys next time for the European Grand Prix. So I'll see you then.